Welcome to Ionicon's webinar, A Short Introduction to BTMS. My colleague Philip Sulzer, Head of the Research Department, and I, Simone Yoshi, Research Scientist at Ionicon, will guide you through this webinar, which gives you an idea of the working principle and handling of BTMS. Now my colleague Philip will take over and introduces you to the world of BTMS. Thank you very much, Simone, for this great introduction. Let's start with some quick key facts about our company. We are an SME located in Innsbruck, which is in the western part of Austria, very close to Germany, Italy and also Switzerland. So we are literally located in the heart of Europe. We are the market leader in proton transfer reaction mass spectrometry. This means that we provide very, very sensitive solutions for trace gas analysis. As I've used already the term proton transfer reaction mass spectrometry, which is abbreviated with PTRMS, I'll now explain you what the two parts of this term mean. First, we have proton transfer reaction. This is a ionization method that uses direct sample injection. So you don't need any sample preparation and it's a real-time technology. This means you get your quantitative results on your measurement computer in real time. It's very efficient and it's also a soft ionization method, which means you get a quite low level of fragmentation. In case you want to use different reagent ions such as NO plus or O2 plus, we call this SRI. And if you even want to use Krypton plus, we call this SRI plus. In this case, SRI stands for selective reagent ionization. The second part of the term PTRMS stands for mass spectrometry. And here we have the choice between quadrupole or time of flight mass spectrometers. Let's just have a quick look at a few of our products. These are the quadrupole mass spectrometry based ones. We have a compact instrument and we have a high sensitivity instrument that's a little bit larger but also offers much more sensitivity and lower limit of detection. But nowadays, time of flight based instruments are much more important. And here we offer a big variety of different models, ranging from a rather compact model that has a mass resolution of about 1500 up to the high end instrument that has 6000 mass resolution and a detection limit below one part per trillion. But let's talk about the principle behind PTRMS. So you're familiar, I think, with conventional analysis. And here the gold standard is gas chromatography mass spectrometry, abbreviated with GCMS. It works like the following. You have a sample, you have a GC column, and you have an analyzer. And this is your computer screen where you will get the result. So the whole process works like this. At first, you have to do sample preparation, which is a quite complicated process and you have to have a lot of knowledge about that to do it right. And for sure, it also takes some time to prepare your sample. As soon as the preparation is finished, you can inject the sample into the column. And as soon as the sample is injected into the column, it will travel through the column, which takes some time, and finally gets analyzed in the analyzer. And that's the point where you get your result on your computer screen. So this is, as I said, the gold standard. It's a very selective method and you can do very accurate quantification, but it needs a lot of time to do one analysis. So can uh, be up to one hour for one single analysis. This means that real-time processes cannot be monitored with this technology. And here's where PTRMS shows its real big strength. So again, in this example, you have your sample. Let's say it's, it's, a, it's a liquid that's constantly evaporating some headspace, or it's a, a gaseous sample, or even a solid sample like a powder or so, because every substance has a certain vapor pressure that means it will evaporate uh, some of, of its compounds. So what PTRMS does now is it continuously draws in air and it analyzes this air for the compounds that are in in real time. In this animation you see it like this. So the 
Evaporated particles get pumped into the instrument, get analyzed in real time and on your measurement computer you will get the full mass spectrum with the intensities which are directly proportional to the uh, quantities that are in the air in real time. So this is now the perfect technology to do online analysis to monitor pro fast changing processes like if you want to do breath analysis or if you want to do real-time monitoring of envi environmental chemistry and so on. But uh, this is just an animation and in an animation people can show you virtually everything. So let's take this opportunity and uh, do a little experiment on a real instrument in our laboratory. In the following short lab experiment we want to demonstrate you how to do online measurements with PTMS and give you an idea of its high sensitivity. For the lab experiment I use a closed bottle bought from a chemical company as a sample. Before I put the bottle in front of the inlet system, the PTMS is measuring ambient lab air as a background. When I place the bottle in front of the inlet system, the signal rises immediately within milliseconds. When I remove the bottle, the signal decreases to background level within milliseconds again. Let's do this once more. Again you see the immediate response of the system and the immediate decrease after removing the bottle. Now that we are back from the lab, I want to give you some information about what's happening inside the instrument. In our instrument, at first, we have an iron source. You can see that here. It's a hollow cathode iron source. This means you have a plasma burning inside and you have an inlet for water vapor. What you cannot see in this picture is that down here there is a reservoir filled with liquid water and this liquid water is constantly evaporated into the source. Because of the sophisticated design of the iron source, the H2O is very efficiently transferred into H3O+. That means it gets an additional proton attached. So after the ion source, the H3O plus is injected into the so-called drift tube. Some people also call this the reaction region. And you have also a sample inlet into this drift tube. This sample inlet you have just seen in the video from our lab. And it's constantly drawing in the outside air containing your molecules of interest. So in the drift tube, the H3O plus reacts with all those compounds that have a higher proton affinity than water and it transfers its proton to this compound of interest. So at the end of the drift tube you end up with the ionized compound of interest and that's then transferred into the transfer lens system. This system can differ depending on the, the model you're using. So we have instruments that use a conventional transfer lens system. We have instruments that have an iron guide there, also iron funnel. And finally, you have the TOF mass spectrometer. And such a TOF mass spectrometer works like this. You get your ions inside this region. Then they get an electrical impulse. And depending on the mass of the ion, this impulse leads to a different final speed of the ion. So the ions are pulsed in this direction, they get reflected by a reflectron and finally detected by a detector. And depending on the time they needed to travel this path, you can easily get the mass of the respective ion. So let's see this whole process in a short animation. At first you have your water vapor entering the ion source. In the ion source this is transferred into H3O+. You get your air containing the molecules of interest into the drift tube and also the H3O+. Then the proton is transferred to this molecule. It goes through the transfer lens system and finally it is pulsed through the TOF mass spectrometer and detected. So that's the principle behind PTR TOFMS. It's quite simple, but as you've seen, it's very, very efficient. After Philip's description of the PTMS working principle, I would like to show you now two typical fields of application. 
First, let's delve into food and flavor research and development where PTMS is used as a very popular measurement tool around the world. To get an overview of about two decades of food research, as well as several other fields of application, you can have a closer look into the book Proton Transfer Reaction Mass Spectrometry, Principles and Applications, written by Alice and Mayu. But now let's go back to the lab and do a proof of principle spiking experiment on our own. As you can see, I have prepared two glasses of commercially available orange juice. Now I will spike one of these glasses with a few microliters of a chemical compound. This amount is below the human's active level. As a next step, I analyze the headspace of the two glasses orange juice one after the other. First, I measure the non-spiked orange juice. Looking at the mass spectrum, you can see aroma compounds rising, but not the signal of the added compound monitored below. Then I analyze the headspace of the spike juice and you can see the signal of the added compound rising within milliseconds. Although the orange juice is a complex matrix, PTMS is selective and sensitive enough to detect the compound of interest in real time. As a second experiment we will do a breath analysis with PTMS. Breath analysis is an essential tool in clinical research. Using PTMS for breath analysis enables the detection of compounds present in human's blood without any sample preparation. The results of the first breath analysis done with PTMS were already published in 1995, where the breath of smokers and non-smokers was compared to identify characteristic markers. For more details, you are very welcome to have a look in the publication shown below. But now let's go back to the lab and do a proof of concept demonstration of the mentioned study. At the beginning of the experiment, PTMS is just sucking ambient air. When I breathe into the instrument, you can see the red line rising on the screen below. It monitors the rhythm of breathing. When Philip breathes into the PTMS system, even a blue line rises. This line illustrates the signal of a typical marker for smoker's breath. Now you are very welcome to have a guess who is the smoker, Philip or me. You have seen now two applications of PTRMS, but for sure there are many, many more. So I just want to list some of the typical PTRMS application. It's ranging from environmental research to food and flavor science, uh, indoor air quality studies, also medical applications. Uh, more recently, industrial VOC monitoring, safety and security. And I just want to mention that we have now more than 300 of our instruments in operation worldwide so you can imagine that there is a huge variety of different applications if you are more interested in that I just want to refer to our website ionicon.com here you can find a lot of examples you can also find publications on different fields of applications for PTRMS we do not only offer off-the-shelf solutions but also customized solutions for our users. So here are just some examples that have been built by our strong in-house engineering team. On the bottom left, for example, you can see an instrument that has been specifically constructed for a NASA flight campaign. And what's also quite interesting here in the middle, we have a PTRMS instrument that is mounted on a remote controlled robotic platform. So it can move without any cables connected and can do this analysis virtually in every place you want to. At this point, we are finished with our webinar introduction to PTRMS and I would like to take the opportunity to thank you very much.
for your attention. Also from my side, thank you for joining our webinar and tune in the next time. Thank you very much for watching this Ionicon webinar. As you are already sitting in front of your computer, take the opportunity and visit ionicon.com. On this website, you will find many useful information about PTRMS. For example, you can have a look at our current product portfolio and see the specifications of all our instruments. Maybe you're interested in your own personal showcase or just want to read about the analytical service we can provide. Our PTRMS publication database covers publications from various expert groups from all over the world. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to use the contact form or contact us in any other way you would like. So please go ahead and surf to ionicon.com.